Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late. Wanted to like just ground out some of these energies. <laughs> we are in between literally like the eclipses and today is Mercury retrograde. So anyway, if you are new, welcome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. I am Island Turtle and this is Balmy Spirit. We're going to be going over the energies for the week. Um, and the way this starts for those of you guys who are new, I'm just going to go over my little synopsis, I guess you could say, of what I've been feeling and tuning into, and also just what I've um, analyzed as far as the astrology goes, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and talk about some collective energies, maybe do some cards there, and if we have time and if I have energy, we will also do uh, the elements as well, okay? So I hope you guys got your snacks, <laughs> hope you guys got your drinks, I hope you guys are feeling good today. Again, like I said, today is Mercury Retrograde. And already it's kind of off to an interesting Mercury retrograde. Uh, there are a couple people in my life that are kind of go, like had some interesting things happen today. Um, sup? Hi. <laughs> hey, Anna, Maylene. Hello. Happy Monday, everyone. Yes, happy Monday. Happy Monday. I had no idea what time of the day I was going to start this. Um, and I woke up and I just like, I just knew there were things I needed to do for me. Which I think is also uh, very in line with the collective energies we got going on right now. And I just decided I will get to this when it is the best energy and the best time. And that turned out to be kind of at the end of the day. So here we are. But you know, that's kind of nice too. Because like people getting off work, right? You like want to go home, you want to relax. And we can just like hang out and talk energies. Hi, Sam. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Finally caught a live. It's 2 a.m. in South Africa. <laughs> oh, no. Are you not able to sleep? <laughs> are you not sleeping? Oh, Kauai is in the house. Hi. Hi, Kauai. I've been thinking about Hawaii a lot. Hawaii, Hawaii has been on my mind a lot. No worries. Just seeing little astral cats. Okay. Interesting. As I said, Hawaii. <laughs> Excuse me. I've been feeling the call to go. Uh, this last week was activating. <laughs> yes. Hope everyone's feeling more rested than me. Yeah, this last week was crazy. This last week was really crazy. I I definitely had a moment where it was just like, I like I just was really overwhelmed. Um, I feel like I had a lot of things like, like out of nowhere, just come in and like, you got to take care of this. You got to take care of this. You got to take care of this. I'm like, what about the other stuff I have to do? Um, so I had to take a few days and just <laughs> throw in the towel honestly uh and it's interesting because the energies this week I feel like that's a big part of it um so I you know and sometimes you know I experience energies before other people there are a lot of people who do that too um before like the mainstream collective I guess you could say so it's gonna be an interesting week no sleeping your Capricorn moon was busy my my happy moon was 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 having a hard time. <laughs> so having a really hard time. I had to do a lot of self-care. I had to do a lot of self-care after like running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Uh let's see, deep cleaned and self-care kind of a day. You know, there's a lot of Pisces energy too that I think is kind of calling us to like take care of self. Self is gonna be a huge theme this week. Um we're we're about like three so minutes in, so Definitely want to just get started on it. I could see what you said about paranoia and projection. <laughs> Ooh, that means you had a week. If you're saying that, that means you had a week. Uh, oh, yeah, it's April Fool's, too. Totally forgot. I even forgot about Easter. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, Easter. Uh, what do you think about Red Jasper and Aventurine? I think they're cool. Just, you know, different strokes for different folks. I don't use Red Jasper a lot. I have some, but I don't use it a lot. Um... It's really good for just grounding out energies and just like for wanting to be calm, wanting to feel safe and working on the root chakra. Aventurine comes in a lot of different colors. So Aventurine is also just very, how do I want to say, um, like agates, like jaspers. There's such a variety of them that you can use them for so many different things. You got baptized this weekend. Oh my God, everyone had an interesting weekend. Mercury retrograde always affects my daughter so hard. I'm not sure why. She could have uh, a strong connection to Mercury, honestly. That that could really just be it. Um, okay, I'm going to say this little thing, and then we're going to go ahead and get into it, okay? Um, so you all know I'm an astrologer. And in astrology, we look at different things. Everyone's got different opinions. There are a lot of ways somebody can be connected to a celestial body, that might not be really apparent if you're just looking at like the surface of astrology, you know? Um, 
like how like, okay so like for i have a i have a friend that i was going over his chart with recently god mercury retrograde is already starting i feel very like words feel very hard for me right now um and he, he has a little bit of cancer in his chart like not a lot um but he has a lot of aspects that are surrounding his moon like his moon is really important so like I consider him to be very like impacted by the moon. And because of that, there's also this Cancerian energy that's actually very strong in him, even if there's not a lot in his chart, you know, there's, there's a lot that can go into it depending on how you want to look at it. So it's just kind of an interesting study, but let's get started on talking about this week. And uh, again, be patient with me as I find my words, because clearly it's like, I'm having a hard time with that today. So actually timestamp, hold on a second. And it's interesting, too, because getting on, I can feel it. Like, I feel a lot of pressure on my head. Um, there might be some headaches going on in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Aries does rule the head, and we are literally being catapulted and all this Aries energy. But we also have a lot of Pisces energy, too, that could be amplifying that. Jupiter working with Uranus can also be very activating. It, I can, like, feel it. It feels like a little bit of, like, a vice around my head and, like, my third eye. Um, so... Just be aware that might be energy that you might experience too. But this week, such like, such like a layered week. The biggest thing, the most important thing this week is that there are, we still have that Jupiter Uranus like groundbreaking, earthquakey, foundational shifting kind of energy. So you can expect some big shifts as far as what are foundations for you like what brings stability for you, what you've relied upon, what you've attached to. And I feel like mostly in terms of, of uh, belief systems, honestly, mostly in terms of belief systems and what you find valuable or like how you attach value to things, especially when it comes to like money, um, your own personal self-esteem, like how you feel about yourself, um, how you're living. There's a lot of changes that are gonna be going on for everybody in terms of the home, okay? The home, how we live, who we live with, roommates, loved ones, chosen family, bio family, the mother wound's been going around too. Um, I've really been wanting to do a little like Island Turtle Talk episode on that. I keep meaning to, I just, I really had to like prioritize me, honestly, this last week. And again, that energy is very collective too. So you can expect a lot of that. And when I say like foundational shifts, I'm not just talking about like, like, I'm not going to eat bread anymore like, or whatever. It's like, I mean, big things like moving, like meeting people who will be in your life long term, like changing your whole perspective on money and, and investments and what's important with that in relation to your life and personal pursuits. And I mean, big things, big things. They, these events, they don't have to be bad wow we're very primitive today and I debated if I should even record this today because it's Mercury retrograde I'm like should I wait till tomorrow it's like you'll be happy you did it today so I'm just I'm just pushing through um these events don't have to be bad they don't have to bring chaos they don't have to bring struggle and again some of you it might just be a shift in a belief system but a lot of us may also experience it externally okay so just know that. So what's driving a lot of these events too, big changes in the home, like I mentioned, but also karmic closeouts. So we're also going through this energy around this time, this specifically this week as we approach the eclipse on the 8th, where this whole last four months of the North Node working with Chiron is eclipsing out. This is going to be, I do believe this is going to make the final week where that energy of the North Node working with Chiron and Aries is prevalent. So here we are literally eclipsing that phase out of deep shedding, uh, deep breaking away from patterns and working on our wounds and all those things. So we could be more assertive and we could use our voices more. All the things we've been dealing with for months, we're eclipsing that out. And as we're eclipsing out, as we're eclipsing that out, we're also closing out karmic cycles and patterns along with that. Okay, and that is actually going to help to bring on this sort of foundational groundbreaking earthquake like energy within and without. Okay, um, but what's cool about that is as we experience these, I'm just gonna say groundbreaking, I think that's a better way to say it. As we experience these groundbreaking energies, events, opportunities, internal shifts, external shifts, we're also going to start to have 
a lot of clarity as to how our long-term dreams or even our long-term like legacy and plans and goals needs needs to shift almost like to harmonize them to harmonize them to bring them into alignment with being more led by the soul there's a lot of soul-led energy this week some of us may experience that more in the heart and more emotional and more empathy and more compassion some of us being led by our soul it's going to be way more aries like where it's going to be more like no it's time for me to live for me and like put forward my personal pursuits and i'm going to be assertive about this and i'm going to speak up for myself and i'm going to speak up for other people right so everybody's going to experience it a little differently um but that is like the gist of what is going on this week as far as the energies go big big groundbreaking opportunities events shifts brought on by things that we are finally done shedding karmic closeouts that we are now done with changes in our home life and who we're living with and changes in family people coming in people coming out even and that will also lead to soul-led commitments okay and when i say soul-led commitments i'm talking like marriages i'm talking about like dedicating yourself to an art or a practice or even like a spiritual art or dedicating yourself to um, anything that really feeds your sense of personal fulfillment here right but I mean long-term stuff, long-term stuff. So this is kind of the week where we might reflect back months later, years later and go, oh, that's when it happened. <laughs> that's kind of how it feels. It feels like the week where, oh, this is when it happens. <laughs> this is when it happens. Um, and this might have, and all of these also, uh, events might also play out closer to the eclipse and Aries, but that's what I was really feeling this week. That's what I was feeling this week. Now, as far as like um, communication goes, so just getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty. And again, we can all experience this differently. It's just windows of energies that we're all working with. So you work with it however you want. But with communication, very bold, very bold, <laughs> very bold communication. And for some, even very assertive Um so just something to keep, something to keep in mind. I, I really feel like in the beginning of the week, there almost may be a harshness about it that could potentially bring on um, conflict or even tension unnecessarily. But like that part, I think will ease up. But assertive communication, bold communication, very flirty ways of going about things too, uh, will be very prevalent throughout the week, and that will I think continue through to the new moon Aries eclipse as well. Okay. Um, now let's talk about love relationships are going to be weird. <laughs> like I was looking at these aspects and I was feeling into it and I was just like, huh, this kind of feels like strange bedfellows is, is like what I, what I would say, like in relation to that energy. Um, there's on one hand, there's this very like romanticized, like sensual kind of uh, energy going on with relationships. So I think there's going to be a lot of flirting. I think there's going to be flings. I think some people are going to have some fun. But at the same time, there's also this call for very deeply soul-connected relationships, like very, very spiritual relationships. Um, and then at the same time, <laughs> we also have a little bit of feisty energy too. But then we have this long-term commitment energy. So it feels like this week with relationships, we're getting the whole bag. We're getting the whole bag of experiences, especially if people are coming in like in new relationships where it can be flirty and fun and feisty and maybe very short lived or it can be very like deeply soul connected and like I almost want to say um, activating. Yeah, I guess like activating like catalytic energies. And then for other people, it's also going to be like entering into very long term committed relationships. So interesting It's going to be interesting. Uh Let's see, my natal Libra moon is at 22 degrees and square my Uranus. Oh, 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 that's interesting. Romance is off the charts. <laughs> when are they not weird? Yeah, it feels so weird already. Hi, Rodin, hi. Uh, got told I'm having a great grandchild yesterday. Oh my God, congratulations. Oh, congratulations, that's amazing, that's amazing. Uh. Thanks, cool message, Island Turtle. I like that. It's one of energy. Use it how you want. Well, yeah, it is. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. Uh, been sleeping great. Feel very outgoing, grounded, and talkative. Can't complain with this good energy. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling good. I'm glad you're feeling good. It just feels like things are intense, right? I feel like I passed the threshold. Congratulations. 
What a beautiful name. My mom's name is Amalia, the work of God. Oh, well, that's a name. That is a name. Okay. So that is the spiel as far as what to expect this week with energies, okay? Um, so enjoy the ride. <laughs> is what I want to say to that? Enjoy the ride. Because it's a ride. It's definitely a ride. Uh, for the astrology, I don't want to like, you know, overwhelm people with information too much. I finally quit my job last week, much more peaceful. Oh my God, that's a huge step. That is a huge, huge step. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people do that, like quitting their jobs or suddenly feeling like it's just not aligned with them or like their views on their jobs have changed. Again, very collective. Started taking magnesium to help. Every week is a new threshold, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now let's get into the astrology. Like I said, I don't wanna like overwhelm with information because there's especially like one cluster of energies is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And also now that I'm like getting into the astrology, uh, I might not even look at the comments while I'm doing that just so you guys know so I can stay focused. I can feel it like I'm a little bit extra like easy to distract <laughs> today. So I'm just gonna stay in it. Uh, let's see. 16, 16. All right. The old and familiar becomes too demanding. This is something I know I moved through last week. And again, energy is energy. So it's like when we talk about astrology and we're like, oh, on the 15th, we're going to experience this. But the reality is energy is always moving and fluctuating. So you can start to feel it as we're moving into it and then we're in it. And then you also feel it as it's kind of leaving and shifting. And everybody's a little bit more sensitive than like some people are more sensitive than others. People's charts are different and that has a different play in all of that. So just so you know, everything that I'm talking about could be stuff that you've been experiencing already. And some of you, it's like, might smack you in the face. It's just how energies flow. Um, but this cluster, yeah, the old and familiar becomes too demanding. So I, like I said earlier, this is the last week where the North Node will be working with Chiron in this conjunction in Aries, but the Sun will be joining it before it's over. So the new moon Aries eclipse will also be, like, like I said, eclipsing this north node Chiron conjunction out by also being conjunct with it. Um, I'm going to be live, look it on my calendar. Do I have it listed on there? I thought I did. Friday. I'm going to be live this Friday on Patreon to talk about the new moon eclipse. Um, yeah, so I'll be live over there on Patreon, just so you guys know. Okay. All right. So last week where we're working with this energy and it's kind of like it's not going out with a bang but it definitely is like this just final intensifying moving through things okay i've talked about it for months i kind of don't want to talk about it too much but this conjunction is also going to be square series it's square the white rabbit asteroid as well and it is sextile chericlo in aquarius uh what we've been investing in or been attached to in terms of like legacy career health, how we're living, all of these things, that is actually going to be rubbing up against all like the eclipsing out of this shedding, but that's serving a purpose because it's also going to help us be done with the shedding and then allow us to have any kind of clarity that comes through and then put that towards reevaluating things on what are we just freaking doing with our lives, right? And then rewriting our stories as we need to and also rewriting our visions as we need to. The incense just went like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Um, so there's that. Uh, oh, and I heard this doesn't work anymore. Um, yeah, you just might be getting fed up with shit in your life. Honestly, you might be getting really fed up with stuff in your life. Hold on one second, guys. Let's see. I'm praying to do the same. All right, sorry guys, coming back. Um, yeah, this doesn't work anymore. So just be aware that that might hit you out of nowhere and you might just have a sudden epiphany or just realize like, oh yeah, this is just, no. Like I see the distortion here or I see how this is holding me back or I see how this is not actually fulfilling for me anymore, right? Uh, we're also gonna have some opportunities for some deep soul healing uh, and definitely utilizing that voice. We've been having that already. So again, these are energies I've been talking about for weeks and we're just still working with it. And that's the the sextile with Chericlo, okay? Now, Mercury going retrograde. Mercury going retrograde, it's in 27 degrees right now. 
So it is working with Eris, at, which is at 24 degrees in Aries, and then that conjunction is also square Pluto. But that conjunction with Eris is going to get stronger as Mercury goes right as Mercury moves back in Aries and will be um, the square to Pluto is also going to be getting weaker. So I was feeling like in the beginning of the week, it feels way more like like power dynamic kind of communication, just like just very assertive and aggressive and maybe wanting to be a little controlling, maybe even being a little angry, like out of nowhere. So just be mindful about that. But that's more in the beginning of the week. But towards the end, we're still going to have this very like I'm speaking on behalf of what's right. I am speaking up for myself. I am speaking up for others, right? Just kind of no holds barred. And again, cementing this eclipsing of the shedding that we've all been doing, okay? Um, and then all the relationship weirdness. <laughs> the relationship weirdness. Uh, we have Venus and Pisces, which will move into Aries towards the end of the week. Venus and Pisces will also be uh, conjunct Neptune. This conjunction with Neptune and Venus will also be square Vesta and sextile Pluto. But it's weird because Venus starts at like 25 Pisces and then moves to four degrees Aries by the end. So we definitely have a weird fluctuation around Venus from beginning to end of the week. Like the beginning of the week is way more Piscean. It's way more supported by, by Neptune. It's supported in like that whimsy, that romanticism empathy and like really connecting with people like heart to heart just very authentic and we start getting kind of like how do I want to say this we start getting a little bit less about that and a little bit more about ourselves <laughs> which isn't bad right it's not a bad thing it just is what it is um and that can lead to some really cool collabs with people that could create some really great friendships a lot of fun times to be had but because we also have this commitment energy that I'm going to talk about soon in a minute, it, it, yeah, it just creates a weird, like, it just creates a weird experience and field of just so many possibilities with relationships. Like, you could meet someone and think like, oh, this will be like a fun fling short term thing and you could end up like marrying them. Or you could like meet someone and it could just be like, this very magical, deeply soul connected thing and suddenly like, oh, they were just supposed to be in my life for a month. Okay, weird, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? It could be like that. So anything can happen with relationships, but just enjoy yourselves and have fun. Okay. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Uh, here's where it all begins. So this is kind of interesting. So Jupiter conjunct Uranus. I've already talked about that. That is here. That is part of this next cluster. Mars is also going to be working with Saturn by the end of the week in Pisces. So you have Mars moving into this conjunction with Saturn in Pisces, while Jupiter is working with Uranus in a conjunction. Here's where it gets interesting. Both of these conjunctions, Pisces and Taurus, are also sextile. So you have four celestial bodies working, right, with their little partners, right? And then they're sextile each other. It just creates this unlocking of opportunities. So again, kind of speaking back to what I was talking about before of like all of that groundbreaking energy um, as far as our shifts and beliefs, shifts in consciousness, um, even just events that maybe shake up our physical reality a little bit or towers that happen that really push us in a different direction or really open our eyes or maybe even crack us open emotionally. These can all happen in various ways, right? All of that cracking is going to create opportunities to really get into that Mars, Saturn, Pisces energy. Mars working with Saturn, amazing for work ethic, amazing for focus. Uh, and in Pisces though, it brings up uh, the, the soul. It brings up, are you really taking action from your heart? Are you taking action from your soul? Are you prioritizing that? Or are you leading with your head? Or are you leading with your ego, right? Um, and Saturn also likes people to be disciplined, likes people to be committed. And because we also have all this other relationship energy, it brings up those opportunities of, are you ready to be very focused and diligent and committing yourself to what your soul is telling you to do, where your soul is pulling you, where your heart is pulling you, whether it's a relationship or relationships, it could be about like, you know, just choosing soul family, right? Whether it's uh, an art like music. Music is huge this year, huge this year, and very huge right now. Uh, maybe it's spiritual arts, because it is also Pisces, right? Uh, so it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, amazing, amazing opportunities to be born of this. Now, something else that's interesting. So those four celestial bodies are working together. 
We also have Ceres in Capricorn, Lilith in Virgo, Orcus in Virgo, and the White Rabbit in Cancer, all aspecting all four celestial bodies. So this is what I mean when I talk about astrology and when I say it's multifaceted. You can't just look at one aspect and think you have the, the whole picture. We'll never have the whole picture. I was going to say that. We'll never have the entire picture. We just have these like little bits of information that kind of shines a light in a certain direction. And then it's up to us to kind of just feel into it and piece it together and figure it out. Um, so again, I'm not going to overwhelm you with all of the individual information about all these individual aspects. Just know that a lot of this will be supportive into whatever reevaluation or shifting that we're doing as far as what's important to us now. What is important to us in the long term? What's important to us as far as personal pleasures go or investments or legacy? Legacy is the biggest part of all of this, right? And I think, excuse me, I saw someone say, oh, it's a trigger word. If that's a trigger word for you, that is a trigger word for you. I could see that, I guess. I could see that with people in the collective being triggered by that word. But the word itself is a very, it encompasses a lot of things when you talk about legacy, right? Because legacy is not just a money thing. It's a generational thing. It is seven generations down the line. What am I leaving behind, right? That's legacy. Excuse me. Um, what else do I want to say about this? I think that's all I want to say about this, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's really all that needs to be said. Now, as far as the signs of like who will be most impacted, Aries for sure. Aries, y'all gonna feel this, okay? <laughs> when I say most impacted, I mean like who's gonna experience this like just energetically the most intense, not necessarily like the most shit is gonna happen to you, right? Um, but Aries, if you have any personal planets in Aries from, God, it's kind of the whole house. I would look at the whole house of Aries, but 15 to 20 degrees, the 19 degree point is pretty important. Um, but even begin the early degrees, zero to five. But if you wanted to really fixate on it, Aries, 15 to 20 degrees, but the whole house I would look at. Uh, earth signs. Earth signs. Y'all going to feel this. This is also something that's interesting, too, about the astrology at play. No matter what your rising sign is, no matter, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go as far as to say this. No matter what chart what your chart has going on you can expect some big changes in your physical reality no matter <laughs> no matter what your chart is like because we do literally have all of the earth signs going on so we have taurus virgo and capricorn highly impacted in all of this which means all of the earth signs so it doesn't really matter like where those fall in your house is because it's going to imply a shift in your physical reality or your physical experience it could be health it could be money it could be housing it could like you understand what i'm saying right and it doesn't have to be bad change is not bad change can invite beautiful things this is making way for a really, really beautiful existence if that's how you are navigating and adapting with all these changes, right? Please let it be 10 pounds disappearing. Uh, hold on. I knew this one was going to be hella intense. It's intense. It's intense. And it's interesting too because I, I can feel it. Like I'm definitely like in a weird like energy. Uh, and I think it is just the retrograde. It's like because I still feel that vice energy, but I also feel a little like distracted too. Um, and I feel like almost my team is keeping me distracted. It's a very, very strange feeling. But anything else I want to say about this? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. This is the week where it all begins. I just keep wanting to say it that way. All right. So we're going to get into some collective messages. You can treat this like an intermission <laughs> if you want to. I haven't decided what decks want to be used today for the collective read. Hmm. You sold your house. Oh, that's huge. Oh, Kylie, thank you for the $9.99. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. A politician asked me to travel to see the eclipse with him. I'm like, what is my life? <laughs> yeah, that's, inter that's an interesting invitation. That is a very interesting invitation. Hmm. I like, I'm curious to ask more, but like, but this is like not really the place to get into all of that. Hmm. Can growing up on a Native American burial ground affect my chart? Oh, interesting. Oh, Courtney. Courtney, thank you. Thank you for the $9.99. Uh, let's celebrate the first. Oh, 
all these features that I still like don't know or understand about YouTube lives. Okay, I didn't know I could do that. Um, it was so hard. Wait, but who asked that again? Oh, Meet Angel. Yeah, can growing up on a Native American background like affect your chart? Uh, Kimberly, thank you for the three ninety nine. Thank you. Can that affect your chart? I mean, I'm tempted to say no because you can't change the stars. You know, you can't change the stars. Um, yeah, you can't change the stars. It would impact you in your life. No question. <laughs> There's no question it would impact you. I don't think it would it could impact your chart. I'm gonna I'm gonna say no on that. I'm gonna say no on that. I invite Rahu K to do this very nodal reading. These cycles turn and flip and align with great intention. Oh, imagine. I love you. Do, imagine you showed up to like all the lives too. Okay, hold on. I need a light. <clears throat> For the collective read. Where are we going for the collective read? Let's see. Ooh, not feeling those. Not feeling those. We could do the goddess deck again. I'm kind of tempted to do the goddess deck again. Actually, yeah, let's do spell casting. I do like me some spell casting. We're going to start the spell casting deck. Is anyone in Hawaii signing to get rid of that kidnap bill? Oh shit. Kidnap bill? What the fuck is a kidnap bill? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Someone's like, time stamp. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. 3154. Wait a minute. I know I just saw something flash on my screen. A. <laughs> thank you for the $50. Oh my God. That's like, that's kind of a lot. That's, that's, that's kind of a lot. Wait. Why did pictures come up all of a sudden? Wait, what did I do? Wait a minute, I'm sorry. It's get, it's showing me something so weird on my phone. Did it just take a picture of me? I, I, I don't know how to get out of this. Um, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um. I'm in a live with you guys. And for some reason, my phone took a picture of me and it's like showing me options to share with you. Is this like a new YouTube feature that I don't know about? What if I just don't want to? Um, this is so bizarre. <laughs> this is just a bizarre feature. I'm just like, like I don't get it. Um, it's not even letting me exit out. Wait, what is that? Pin to live stream, what? Okay, it's not letting me like just not do it. So I'm just gonna do it, I guess. Oh, is this a filter? Oh my God, I feel so like techno technologically like not intelligent. <laughs> okay, that's gonna make me crazy. I guess it's a filter, Never mind. Sorry, sorry. That is me and my not being tech savvy at work. Um, I seriously thought it was taking a picture of me. Anyway, we're going to start, we're going to start with the uh, spellcasting deck. I don't even know how I got there. Honestly, I have no idea how I even got there. Okay. I like that filter, LOL. <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me it was a filter? <laughs> okay. Anyway. Thanks for that moment. Everyone enjoyed that. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Mercury has entered the chat. I was like, I was like, I was alerted out. I seriously thought someone was trying to take a picture of me. Okay. <sighs> Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? I'm definitely getting a strong pull to play. Honestly, I'm getting a very, very strong call. Like it's it's time for some fun. It's time for the soul to frolic. The, the challenge of this week, and I think I mentioned it in my my astrology yammerings, um, it might be very hard to balance like all of this feeding personal passions and 
you know, just going with the whimsy of your soul and enjoying yourself and focusing on you and taking care of yourself and all those things, balancing that and literally like the demands of responsibility. It honestly feels like a week. It's weird because it almost feels like a week of saying, fuck responsibility. Let's just not do it. <laughs> like, screw that. Let's just like live from the soul. But that feels irresponsible to me at the same time. But that's how strong the call is like that's how strong the call feels to just go and have fun we all make our own choices whatever's best for everyone right in our individual lives oh yeah please don't forget to like the video if you are in here and you haven't liked it i appreciate it we got almost 500 people in here too any messages or insights for the collective for this week Yeah, I keep feeling the call for fun, the call to fun, the call to fun, the call to fun. Wouldn't be surprised if we get passion out here. Ooh. Transformation. Well, also not surprising this is out here, right? Because we are also in a week where Jupiter is working with Uranus um, in that let's shake up the foundations. Let's break the foundations even and just see what happens. <laughs> uh, but it is leading to massive, massive change for everybody, even if it looks different from person to person to person. Keep in mind, I said this in other videos, but if you're new, Jupiter being conjunct Uranus goes exact on the 20th of April. That's gonna be a very interesting day. It's also gonna be a few days before Mercury goes direct and the full moon Scorpio. So this, that energy is gonna peak around that time. So just keep that in mind that we're we're just getting a taste and we're not even on the full roller coaster of Jupiter conjunct Uranus yet, but Jupiter conjunct Uranus can absolutely bring this really really beautiful groundbreaking shifts i mentioned it too in one of the weeklies where it was like if it kind of feels like the light is cracking in like the light is breaking in and breaking through things to get to you right don't be surprised if programming shatters like when I, I mean like your personal programming that maybe you didn't even realize needed shattering at all and you're like wait a minute <laughs> like what reality am I in now? <laughs> Who am I now? Any other messages or insights for the collective this week? I keep feeling the fun. I keep feeling the fun. Mm. Compassion. Here's Pisces coming out. Like I said, Pisces is big. Aries is big. All of the earth signs will be highly affected as well. Okay. Meaning everybody should have some, some sort of shift about their physical reality as well. But compassion, that's the soul-led energy. You see how she's even just holding the earth and the globe, right? Mars and Pisces with Saturn and Pisces, even Venus shifting out of Pisces. It's a lot of I want more purpose in what I'm doing. I want more purpose in my relationships. I want deeper, authentic intentions in all aspects of my life. Like that is the Piscean aspect of things that we're working with this week, okay? It's the deep call to intention. It's the deep call to purpose. It's this deep call to just even connect with others on that soul level. Some of you may feel cracked open. Hold on a second. Mm. thank you I like it too <laughs> it's I actually did this a couple weeks ago uh right around the time of the spring equinox I, I need to redo it <laughs> I need to redo it I haven't gotten around to it but yeah some of you may feel cracked open that's something that's coming through very clearly all right any other messages for the collective here for this week am I taking those no okay Thanks for the reminder to drink water. Yes, drink water. Water's kind of vital. <laughs> Not kind of, it is vital. It is very vital. On the bottom, ooh, protection. I did the signs, so my patrons know. Uh, my patrons probably watched them already, but who was it? Was it Pisces or Capricorn? I did Leo and Capricorn and Pisces, and so they'll post this week on YouTube, just so you guys know. Um, one of them had this card, and now I can't remember which one it was. I can't remember. Anyway, felt the need to mention it. Overall energy, we have protection. It's interesting too, even just looking at the images, right? 
both of them holding the earth in their hands. Feels like a holding of self as well. Yeah, it feels like a holding of self. The way that we can balance some of these energies, especially this whole like prioritizing the self, prioritizing passion, prioritizing the pleasures of life, because that is very prevalent this week. It's important to have fun, no matter who you are. Like it is important to have fun. But to ground that, to balance that would also be good to prioritize anything that could like hold you in that, right? Like I'm trying to think of an example. Um, like if you want to go on a trip or something, like let's say you want to go on a little staycation or get away for the weekend. It's like you should be able to do things that set you up to be able to do that easily, right? And not have it be something where you're getting caught up in like, I need to do this and I need to do that and being rigid about things because this is about having true flow and harmonizing your life with true flow because when we're in flow, we are also acting out of our soul on a soul level of things, okay? So that wants to come through as well. The protection card though, there's something else going on here. And I felt this way too with whatever sign had this card and now I can't remember which one it was. It might've been Pisces. Might have been Capricorn. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but there's something else going on here for the collective with protection. You know, Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. I'm being drawn to I'm being drawn to talk about that again. So Taurus, not a lot of people are aware. I mean, they're aware that Taurus is like Venus energy and that it's like beauty is part of that. But Taurus also rules the face, the face, aesthetics, um, self-esteem. Taurus also rules self-esteem and self-confidence. And I'm kind of feeling that here, which I didn't expect really. Uh, it, feel, it also feels very much connected to the solar plexus, which, which would make sense. Um, I do believe Taurus actually is associated with the, with the digestive system too. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it is. But that's what I'm feeling here with protection. That's what I'm feeling with protection. Some of you may be confronted. Yeah, that's how that wants to be said. Confronted. Let me see with that. Confronted. Yeah, some of you just may be very confronted with your own beliefs about yourself in that vein your confidence, your self-esteem, things like that, um, and how much that really keeps you interesting from actually just making your dreams a reality. Like, we can make anything happen. We can. We're divine beings. We're divine beings. But how much of how you've been operating versus how you are about to learn how to operate was to keep yourself safe that's what I'm getting here. It's not even about breaking down walls. It's like, how have you been operating in a way where you've been trying to keep yourself safe? Where you've been, thank you, safeguarding. I just heard safeguarding. Where you've been trying to safeguard money or you've been trying to safeguard your feelings or maybe even other people's feelings or how you've been trying to safeguard the experience of failing or even this experience of success. Sometimes we do safeguard ourselves from the experience of success because the responsibility of that is kind of scary, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting off that protection card. Normally this card comes out to say that you are safe and you're protected. But I think this is about how you're aware of that within yourself. Not really re not relying on that from external forces. Thank you. Not relying on that from external forces. Not relying on that from a place of control. From a place of if I do this, then I'll be okay. If I do this, then like money will be fine. If I do this, if I do this, if I do this, things will be okay. Things will be okay. But all you're really doing is restricting your own potential. Instead of like allowing yourself to step into the unknown or be vulnerable. There's a vulnerability that's being called upon here too. That's, I'm getting more of that cracked open energy. So some of you guys could feel cracked open on the heart level too. I'm also feeling that. Embrace the vulnerability and the excitement of the unknown and stop safeguarding yourself so much. That's what it's coming down to. That's what it's coming down to. Interesting. Let's pull a couple more cards for the collective, though. Um, 
Sometimes I forget the decks I have. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, no. I kind of do want to do the goddess deck. Okay, there she is. There she is. I still don't have a name for her, but she is a combined deck of the Goddess Wisdom Oracle, and I think they're the ones that are just called the Goddess Oracle. Forgetting memories, moving from the heart. I feel just cracked, just cracked. Everyone has prepared me to live this life. Let me grab. Yeah. I would definitely look to your personal houses, like based off your rising sign, to see uh, what house Taurus does rule for you personally. Um, yeah, just I, because again, all this like cracking open energy keeps coming back up, and that's where the light is cracking through. Thank you. The light is cracking through the house of Taurus, is how that's wanting to come through. <clears throat> New visions await. <laughs> new visions, new ideas, new goals await. New priorities await. That will facilitate more peace. I like that. I like that. Internal peace, they said. Oh, that's specific. <laughs> that can facilitate more inner peace. <laughs> they said inner. I was like, oh. I see. Okay. Tell me about transformation. Okay. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. So this is the, the deck I'm shuffling right now. There was a spell casting card stuck in it, which is the deck I just used. And guess what? Guess what it is? Peace. <laughs> okay. You're staying on the board. Tell me about transformation. Not necessarily outer, yeah. Moon and Taurus on the 11th house. So much wounding from people in my community. Oh. Tell me about transformation. I feel like Sophia came out last week, didn't she? I feel like she did. Transformation, we have divine wisdom. I got peace that passes understanding. It's awesome. Word, peace, be ready for what? Okay, guys. Transformation and divine wisdom with Sophia. Again, I just feel that light cracking through. I just feel that light cracking through with that. Some of you may be uh, really connected to Sophia or feel like you've been getting Sophia codes. Uh, some of you could be called to the rose. The rose is coming up there too. Teachings of the rose, that just came through as well. Teachings of the Rose. Mm, I'm just sitting in this a little bit. With Sophia, there is, again, like I said, there's going to be more and more clarity as we move through these energies on what really needs to shift in order to facilitate the inner peace, right? And how our vision, our personal vision, wants to harmonize to be more soul led. I'm feeling that there too, like the clarity that comes through in that way. Talk about compassion. Ooh. Oh, Unag, I think that's how you say that. Easy does it. There is no need to hurry or force things to happen. Everything is occurring in perfect timing. Talk about flow, <laughs> right? That's what that feels like to me. Just embrace the flow. Embrace the flow of your soul. Embrace the flow of your whimsy. Of your in they keep saying whimsy. Whimsy, emotions, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. The too demanding. Thank you. They brought up the, the feelings of things being too demanding. Things are only too demanding if we allow them to be, right? A lot of times things get do too demanding because we also put a lot of pressure on ourselves to get everything done, right? Get everything done. Get, every get everything ready. Get everything in order. Get everything in line. Uh, cross it off the list or or whatever right or people put that expectation on us I'm feeling that too here like lear learning really truly learning that life is only demanding if we allow it to be or if we allow others to pressure us into living that way that life has to be demanding it doesn't 
there will always be a never ending to do list if you allow there one allow there to be one really if you allow there to be one i'm not saying live with no responsibility that's not what i'm saying <laughs> i want to be very clear about that that is not what i'm saying there are things that we have responsibilities to but we don't have to have it take away pieces of our souls <laughs> to just live right um am i gonna talk about that? no i'm definitely not gonna talk about that here um this is just this is also tying to some bigger collective things that are going on that i've been meaning to talk about this is not the place to talk about it um even on a societal level of things does she do any elements no not yet i'm i'm still in the collective read i'm almost done with the collective read actually um but even on a societal level, a lot of us are going to be perceiving that or already have perceived that, like just how much the expectation of societal ways of living are just too simply, simply too demanding for the soul. Just very simply, very simply too demanding for the soul and enough is enough. Some people are definitely feeling that way. Um, yeah. But you are in control of yourself. You are in control of how much you feel the burden of the demand and how much you answer to the burden of the demand. That is completely within your control and there is learning that. And also having compassion for the self when you move into that space. When you get too hard on yourself or feel like you're just not doing enough or it's just never enough or can't do it all, whatever, right? It just feels like the pressures of 3D life going on there. All right, now let's look at peace. I can't believe that. I can't believe that was hiding in there. All right. Tell me about peace. Going to the beach after this. Oh, I'm jelly. I want to go to the beach. I miss the ocean so bad. So bad. Tell me about peace. And then after this, we're going to move into the elements. Tell me about peace. I bet that's the card I think it is. Time. Uh-huh. Time. Orion Hood, I believe, is how is how that's pronounced. Very similar to this, what this card was also saying as well, right? It's like you have to stop being so hard on yourself. We all have to. We all have to stop being so hard on ourselves. Um and putting so much expectation because like you know even in the spiritual community there's been talk for years about the kind of world we're moving into right and everybody needs to be accountable and everyone needs to step up and everyone needs to do the work and everyone need, need everyone needs everyone needs everyone needs everyone needs <sighs> how about just want right how about just want we didn't okay Mercury retrograde. Hold on. Let, let me let me let me rein it in before I get ahead of myself. We came here to experience. It's why we're here. Have have a, have some of us signed up for other things? Yeah. Have some of us signed up for certain soul contracts? Yeah. But we came here to experience. That is the whole purpose. <laughs> like honestly. That is the whole purpose. We're just here to be, okay? And even if we individually have signed up ahead of time to do certain things, we can still do that and still experience. You know, it's like we're not here to be these like perfect little like creatures because we're just not. <laughs> we're just not. And that's part of the experience. So just know that whatever it is that you guys are like wanting to, to experience here, especially this year or plans you got going on, there's enough time to do it all. There is, the world's not gonna implode, I promise. <laughs> I promise. That's another thing I wanted to talk about in that same episode on the other things that I haven't got a chance to talk about. We really gotta get away from this whole doomsday shit. Like, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, not sorry. We gotta get away from the doomsday stuff. How many times has the world gone through the doomsday scenario? And we're fine <laughs> and we're still here and we're still here um i'm not saying that there's not going to be at some point in time some sort of 
uh, big extinctions of certain species or, you know, suddenly there's like, oh no, like suddenly there's like that lake is gone or whatever. Like you guys understand what I'm saying, but we really need to get away from the doomsday stuff. All it does is stress people out. All it does is put people here in this place of feeling like they need to have food for a year. They need to have their housing locked in. They need to have their people with them. They need to have this and they need to have that and the need, need, need. It all, all it does is perpetuate the need. Like <laughs> that's all it does. That's all it does. Um, and it creates this illusion like there's not enough time or there's some sort of deadline that we have to answer to. And that's just not the case. It's just not the case. Like, you know, I know a lot of us want to get to that vision or that notion of new earth or that vision or notion of the golden age, whatever your word is for it. All that is is the experience of being here. That's all it is. It's the experience of being at home within the self and living from that alignment. And there are people already there, right? But that's really all it is. And once you do that, then you're there. And you start making choices from that place and suddenly before you know it, you're you're actually seeing it around you. And then people who are aligned to that with you are also in it too. Um, so, okay, I guess this was like some bigger messages coming up that I did not anticipate. I know I just pulled these two cards and I got on the whole tangent, but that's honestly what I'm feeling. It's like the quickest way to get out of all of that crazy, all the stress, all the burden, all the being hard on the self, all of like all, all, all the crazy, all the crazy is just living from, is just being here. It's really just coming home to self and living from that place of home within self. That's it. And then once you do that, People around you start doing it. And then before you know it, a bunch of us are doing it together. Right? Hold on. Are we still collective? Are we, no, we're still collective. We're still collective. <laughs> Doomsday content creators are creating energy traps, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. I feel <laughs> so much I want to say that it's like, this is not the video to say it. I really got to do that episode sometime this week. <sighs> It's, it's just all an illusion. It's the game. I hate to say it, but it is. It's just the game. Like feeding into all of that stuff, it's just part of the game of being trapped. It's all That's all it is. It's part of the game of, of staying separated from self, staying separated from spirit, from love, whatever words you want to use, or from the creator, right? It's all, it's all just the game of staying in that shit. All right, moving on. Any other final messages or insights for the collective? Have we done water or fire signs yet? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just wrapping up collective. I'm just wrapping up collective. And I think I saw a comment about something. I am not speaking to specific issues. I am not speaking to specific political issues. I'm talking about people who want to stay in the mindset of doomsday and apocalypse instead of allowing themselves to be open to the other, to other possibilities. There, there are other lenses of reality. There are. And that's what I'm speaking to. It's like, and if you hear me talk about this and you're getting triggered and thinking about very specific things in the world where there is suffering going on, that is not what I am talking about. Okay? That's not what I'm talking about. All right. Moving on. Overall, we have Aphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> got all riled up uh inner goddess awaken the goddess within you through dance self-care and appreciating your divinity that is being soul led that is being soul led and look what's underneath her ma'at with fairness she's basically justice she's basically balance she's basically harmony right that is what we're being asked to do this week that's what we're being asked to do this week. It's also about awaken. It's also about embracing and awakening the pieces of ourselves that have been enslaved. Okay, that have been enslaved by the the craziness of the illusion of this global game of power, which doesn't like power is not even a thing. That's the thing. Power is an illusion. Power is an illusion. That kind of power is an illusion. Anyway, I'm getting carried away. But that was the overall energy. So let's go ahead and get into the elements. <laughs> let's just casually move on now. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. 
Hosa. That's like me when I'm my best self. Those two cards there. Yeah, I mean, God, talk about a beautiful place to be. That's a beautiful place to be. Okay. Uh, starting with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. Let's go ahead and see what Ona wants to go first here. Hmm. <sighs> Um, I like, I literally am feeling all the elements at, at once. I, I, I love that. I don't think I've ever felt that before. Like all of them almost like wanting to inter like get in the mix with each other. I like that. I think that's a good sign. Um, earth, air, fire, water. Fire and water, you, you guys feel very like this. Fire and water is very like this right now. Um, so which one are we doing? <laughs> Fire or water? This is so weird. They almost want to be done together, which is like strange. Um, like I tune into fire and I can feel water and I tune into water and I feel fire. Okay, we're just gonna go with water. We're just gonna go with water. Okay. Water signs. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. <laughs> you know, fire and water like stick together. <laughs> yeah. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Any messages or insights for Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio this week? shark flew out but I wasn't I didn't want to take it because the way it flew out but we'll see if it comes out again cancer Pisces Scorpio cancer Pisces Scorpio yeah I cannot stop feeling fire cancer Pisces Scorpio let's see here interesting so we have camel which technically is a, a fire card in this deck Camel for me, when this comes out, is about planning and resources. Um, pacing, pacing, pacing. You're trying to pace something, water signs. That's what I'm getting with this. You're trying to pace. You're trying to pace. You're trying to pace. I think I think that actually feels pretty good. Um, just remember, live a little. Though. Live, live a little. It's good to live too. Um, but you're, pa you're trying to pace um, a plan, a situation. You're avoiding burnout. I like it. You're just trying to be practical about something. You're trying to be realistic about something, but you're pay you're intentionally pacing something. Oh yeah, if you guys haven't seen Avatar, you should totally see that. You should totally see that. Any messages or insights for water signs? What else is going on for my water signs? So here you are, trying to pace. Ooh, another fire card. Shocker. <laughs> Camel and zebra. Water signs. What is going on? So zebra for me is about waving your freak flag, being all of who you are and all of your uniqueness, all of your the beauty of you and the flaws of you and being kind of shameless about it. Like when the zebra comes out, I often say, you're the zebra in a room of donkeys. Very recognizable, very noticeable, just very authentic. Very, very authentic here. Okay. Zebra energy can also be very inspiring and very creative. Like it can be a little bit of like, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, like, like, like Freddie Mercury, right? It's like someone who's just very like, artsy and out there and just doesn't hold back it's like it does feel a little bit like you're actually trying to tame that which makes sense that you have the camel here it's like this is me and my freak flag let me pace it <laughs> like I want the world to see it let me not blind the world it's like <laughs> it's like how that feels some of you this could be about a very specific like project you're working on um I but honestly water signs I feel Wait, put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Yeah, water signs. I feel like it's just your passion. 
it's it's your passion and I think you're aware you're really like lit like you're literally lit like you're on like you're you're just you're I'm trying to think of a phrase here you're very attractive this week you're very magnetic this week you are hot shit this week you know what I mean it's like it's that kind of vibe but you're playing it cool (laughs) but you're playing it cool zebra and donkey do you watch ready for love no I don't I don't I don't know what that is. I, I ready for love. I assume it's a reality show. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. Some of you could also just be really tuned into your own inspiration right now. And so you could be getting a lot of like creative ideas and like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. It's like literally like you're all fire right now, which is very not water sign. Right. And so you could also just be trying to like, like, okay. We, we want to be a little crazy right now, but we're not going to be too crazy. Like it's, it's really just you're maintaining your intensity and your passion and your fiery hotness right now. Okay. Anything else for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Obviously you could have a lot of fire in your chart. I don't think that's it though. I, I, I think you're literally just in your fire element. Like, like most water signs can't even contemplate. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. This also might be why you're pacing yourself. We have earthworm and hyena coming out here. This is also why you're pacing yourself, water signs. Okay. This feels very water sign to me now. Um, so here you are, all of your passion. You're you're ready to go. You're ready to like have your freak flag be waved and seen. And then you hit this. This is this is definitely part of what's making you pace yourself. Earthworm is speaks to new experiences, like stuff that you are not used to, stuff that is like super foreign. Like, let's say you uh, like worked in accounting and now suddenly like you are you're gardening for a living, right? Just totally out of your element kind of a deal. But hyena, hyena is kind of like a seven of swords energy to me. It's the dark side of the moon. It can be a little like about masking, right? Because what does the hyena do? The hyena laughs. The hyena laughs in the face of its prey before it like literally goes to kill them, right? It's it's like a weird juxtaposition that you're finding yourself in. I don't think this is bad. It's like you just know you don't have all the information on what like on how to navigate this. Um, this could literally be like a new living environment, a new work environment. Nadia, thank you for the 499. Thank you. Um, this could be a friendship. This could be a new romance. It's it's something that is really out of your norm. And you're trying to see how to navigate, okay? Some of you could actually be wanting to take a risk, like starting a business, for example. And you're motivated to do it. You're in that zebra energy. You're in your fire element. You are like ready, 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 but you don't want to miss up. You don't want to miss up, which is why you're taking your time. Okay. And if this is a person, (laughs) my guides are so funny. So you see how it's like, it's literally, you see like the light side of the moon, the dark side of the moon. So it's either like waxing or waning, right? So it's in between the full and new moon. They said, just wait for the full moon. (laughs) That's what they said. That's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for the situation to move into its full moon phase where all is revealed basically, where all is revealed. Yeah, it's just, it's just really foreign. And it's just really different. And it's just really new. So you're like, I I know better. I'm gonna take my time with this. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna suss this out. And I, I, I got I'm in it. I want it. I'm excited. But let me not get too excited. <laughs> it's very water sign. Okay. Let's see what other animals want to come out. Then we'll move on to tarot. Anything else for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Phoenix. The Phoenix. The root chakra. Oh my God. You were, you were lit. You were lit. Water signs. The crow, the card of magic, the card of alchemy. Uh, four ninety nine. Thank you. Currently trying. Wait, hold on. Wait, what'd you say? What'd you say? Currently trying a new thing as you speak. Oh, good. 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 
Um, but here we have Phoenix and the Crow, literally the card of magic, of alchemy, of getting into your own your own soul and the empowerment that comes from it. It's a very empowering energy, but it is literally like lighting you on fire. It's kind of crazy. And then cosmic egg. Water signs. You are literally lit from the root to the crown. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was feeling with you. It's like you're pure fire and light right now. You're pure fire and light. Some of you may be um manifesting very fast very very fast that also might be why you're trying to be cautious here um your manifestation abilities are well they're lit <laughs> they are lit because you're lit again whatever this is be very mindful of your words be very mindful of your thoughts and definitely before you take like big leaps just check in with that energy check in with the energy yeah i they keep they keep saying because especially because of this especially because of this you are in just really powerful manifestation mode right now don't be super rigid balance the two balance the two don't be so rigid that you actually don't like utilize this to its full potential whatever this new experience is. We're going to get deeper into it with tarot because it's it, it can tell it's a new situation or relationship or experience for you. All right. Let's see water signs. Random, but I'm so happy we did this at night today. Much needed. Hey, it all worked out. It all worked out. Talk about camel and zebra. <laughs> Two of cups is at the bottom. Talk about camel and zebra. That zebra wants to run. <laughs> Again, the zebra is just that part of you that's just like, let me be in, let me be out, let me do everything I want to do. No holds barred. That is that part of you. Actually, very Lilith. Very, very Lilith, actually. Um, and this is the taming factor. I just really want to like be very clear about this. That zebra energy, that part of you, it, it doesn't want to be restrained. It doesn't want to be. You're doing it because it's like you're practicing that wisdom and just like self-control and aware and self-awareness. Um, but it doesn't want to be. It wants to be free. It wants to be free. I think Pisces had a similar message actually in the Pisces reading I just did the other day. Let's see. Yeah, you're restraining yourself. Three of cups and the eight of swords. You want to party, man. <laughs> like, you just want to have a good time. You just want to be in that three of cups. And another part of me is like, let's not go so hard with that eight of swords. I don't even want to say it's fear. Normally the eight of swords is a fear card for me. I don't feel like it's fear. I literally think you're just trying to tame yourself. Because, thank you, because you can't see everything. Because you can't see everything. And, you know, and we are in Mercury retrograde. We are in eclipse season. Big shit's happening, right? And because this is something so foreign to you, you're just like a, like a true water sign. You're like, if I can't see or feel, then I'm just going to play it cautious. I'm just going to play it cool. But your inner zebra wants out. Okay. Tell me about earthworm and hyena. Especially if this is about a person. I mean, because three of cups does indicate like also social energy, like a lot of social energy. If this is about a person, some of you might be thinking, oh, this is too good to be true. Excuse me. Tell me about earthworm and hyena. Mmm. Oh. 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 <laughs> Earthworm and hyena. We have five of swords and the king of swords. No wonder you're a little like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a little defensive. That's a little, that's a little sus, right? That is a little sus. 
with the five of swords and the king of swords. Some of you are dealing with this energy. I feel like most of you are this energy though. I gotta be honest. And some of you, if there, there's another person involved, it can be like a mirroring situation. But five of swords and the king of swords, that is, that's pure air. Like that is pure air. That is pure mental, logical monkey mind, okay? And it's defensive. It's defensive. Like I said, I think most of you, this is you. Because you can't see all of it you can't see to the other side of it you're in you're in a little bit of defense mode and like and kind of what i was saying earlier don't be too restrictive on yourself here don't get too caught up in this energy because the, the zebra is about fun the zebra is about we're just going to do us and who cares that is zebra this is no there are rules to follow there's going to be a plan in place I am not going to miss up. I'm not going to allow anyone to trespass on my plans or trespass on me. Like that is this energy. Hmm. And if you go into this much air too, I feel like it could easily disconnect you from your fire, from this lit energy that you're in right now. Okay. But if some of you are dealing with this energy, I got to be honest. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would <laughs> like, like, if this is a person you're dealing with, I wouldn't. Like, I just wouldn't. I so just wouldn't do that. Like, you're an amazing energy right now. You have amazing energy at your disposal. Lit, incredible manifestation abilities. Literally, you're just like fire and light. Like, if you're that and you're dealing with this, why? Why, why, why? Why even do it? Why? Right? Just why? Um... So something to chew on, water signs. But like I said, if this is more a situation you're just trying to figure out, like starting a business or starting a new skill or hobby, and it's just so foreign to you, you're just not sure what to like make of it as far as feeling comfortable, you're just in defense mode, okay? But don't lose the, don't lose the fire and the light. Don't lose the fire and the light. That is your bread and butter right now. That is your gold right now. Any other messages or insights for water signs? I like where this is headed. So now, with this earthworm and hyena energy, we have the death card. I like that. Yeah, let's dissolve that. <laughs> let's dissolve that defensive, a little bit like controlling, honestly, because when anyone gets in this energy of like, no, this is how it's going to go. These are the rules. Um, I'm not going to allow anyone to do this. I'm not going to allow any mistakes to happen, right? What anyone gets gets there, it, it's not it's not fun anymore. It's not fun. And the fire is not there. The heart's not there. It's like, no, we need to dissolve that very icy defensiveness, right? Um, so water signs, as you tread into this unfamiliar territory and this arises within you, don't allow it to take over. Deal with it. Dissolve it. And if you're dealing with someone like that, honestly, I just wouldn't. I just, like, I just wouldn't. I would literally be like, no, thank you. I'm in good energy. No, thank you. It's like what I would say. Uh, overall, wait, wait, wait. I think I just saw. Oh, hey, Divine Phoenix Rising. Everyone say hi. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, I see defensiveness. Yeah, interesting point to come in the reading for sure. <coughs> Hold on a second. Mm. Overall, we've got the lovers. <laughs> of course, as I pull out the Gemini card, um, with another Gemini card, by the way. Lovers and the Knight of Swords. Ooh, six of cups. This is what I'm saying. You're just in good energy. Like, don't waste it. Six of cups and the Knight of Cups. Okay, this is reminding me of the Leo reading I did a couple days ago. It'll post tomorrow on YouTube, but it's on Patreon now. Um, Leo had the uh, Knight of Cups and the King of Swords come out, and there was this whole, like, struggling to balance the mind and the heart. You're, you're, you're balanced. 
okay? You're balanced. You're an amazing energy. You also have some like inner child nostalgia, fun butterflies in the belly kind of energy going on. You're also very aligned to spirit here too. Like water signs, you're, you're going to be fine. Like this is going to be a bomb week for you. I'm not even that worried. Even if you get a little like icy and defensive as you're moving into unfamiliar territory, I think it's going to dissolve very quickly because there's just a lot of magic going on here. And don't forget your manifestation abilities are really on point this week. So be very aware of your words and your thoughts and all of that stuff. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. All right. Moving on. Wait, where did my timestamps go? Oh, okay. Literally covered them with the cards. Well, naturally, since fire and water did not want to separate, we're going to do fire. <laughs> It was like so fascinating to feel into that. Um, okay. Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag. I think I'm really feeling Sag, or it could it it could also just be the collective fire energy. But they literally showed me a bow and arrow, and I'm like, oh, that's so Sag. It's very Sag. Um, Palace Athena is doing a little activity. And she is in Sagittarius. Um, let's 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 get let's get into that fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sag. Okay, so this might also be why fire and water were like this, um, like how water signs, like you guys were pacing, you guys were sussing things out. Fire signs, you it feels like you're holding on to an intention or like you're hold you're holding something. Like you're literally like, okay, hang in there with me. It's like you're holding in mind something you want to do. I think that's what it is. Cause yeah, it's like you have the the arrow and the bow, you've got it pulled back and you're just holding it. You're just hanging there. You're just waiting. So water signs are sussing something out, pacing themselves, and fire signs, you're like this. <laughs> you're like, I'm ready, but I'm not ready. <laughs> it's like, that's how that feels. I'm ready, I'm not ready. Um, okay. I'm ready, I'm not ready. Fire signs. Also, it reminds me of Mercury retrograde too. And I used to actually I used to explain retrogrades like that. So for retrograde phases, just for those who are new and don't really know, uh, you have the pre-shadow, you have the actual uh retrograde you have the moment of state going stationary directing, you have the post shadow. The pre shadow is like, like I used to say like a slingshot, but it is like a bow and arrow. So I think Mercury retrograde is a huge part of your reading too. Makes sense, it's an Aries. But the pre shadow is you've got your bow and the arrow and you're slowly starting to pull it back. You're slowly pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. The retrograde phase is when you're fully, like you fully pulling it back and you're just holding. And you're just holding and then when the when the planet moves into stationary direct that's when we start to move forward again um and then the post shadow is integrating all of that energy but like even when we go stationary direct you're not actually just letting it go it's not like you're not letting it go it's a slow coming back and releasing the pressure releasing the tension and then it's and then it's done and we're integrated right so i think it's also relating to that okay So you're ready, but you're not ready, fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sag. Am I taking this? No. Aries, Leo, Sag. Your energy is super strong. Yeah. <laughs> I had to walk away before the collective thinking I'd be doing timestamps, and here you are shining brighter than when I stepped away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive that. Thank you. That, like, that actually felt really good to, to read. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, my energy is really strong. Um, I used to be better about putting activation warnings on my videos because I, I do activate people. Oh, I'm just getting really hot in the back of my neck as I said that. Um, yeah, activation warning, I guess. Aries, Leo, Sag. Do you not want to talk about this? Ooh. Ooh, no, yeah, no, no wonder you're just holding. Unicorn and sea serpent. Two cards and both of them are chakra cards. 
that almost never happens. The probability of that happening is pretty low. Uh, we have the third eye and we have the sacral chakras out here. I keep feeling the throat though. Like again, third eye and sacral, but I'm feeling the throat. The throat is, is basically is a neighbor. It's adjacent to the third eye, but I keep feeling throat probably also because the sacral is an expression chakra more about creative expression and play and all of that. But I keep feeling the throat here. It could be that maybe you, you need to say something, that you need to share something, express something, and that's what you're holding off on. Like it's not the time to share, it's not the time to express. There'll be a day, but it's not today. That's, that's what I'm feeling with you. It feels like fire signs are in a percolating period here. And especially with the third eye being here, uh, some of you, this could be very, specifically you've been getting downloads about certain things or you've just been having a lot of intuitive insights come to you and you're just piecing it all together you're piecing it all together yeah you're piecing it all together you're percolating and there's going to be a time to act on it there's going to be a time to share express but today is not the day so you're percolating aries leo sag Some of you, this is like a big idea, actually. Some of you, this is a creative pursuit. That you're coming into awareness of your purpose or a sense of purpose. I'm going to say a sense of purpose. I need to stop saying your purpose because we, that's also kind of a free will choice to an extent. Um, a creative pursuit that could be fulfilling and give you a sense of purpose. But you're still piecing it together. Anything else for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. My face is like, everything is like so hot all of a sudden. Ooh, lion just confirms what I already was feeling with you. Lion is the master of fire in this deck. This is my king of wands card. The beauty and gift of this card is all about timing. Knowing when to act, when not to, how to reserve your energy, when to exert your energy. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. It's like, you know it's not time. There will be a day, but that day ain't today, and you know it. You know it. You know it. Okay. Any other messages or insights from my fire signs? Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh, turtle and frog. This is part of your percolating process, <laughs> fire signs. Wow, okay, okay. So frog is emotional clearing and cleansing. It's a purging card, it's a healing card. Every time turtle comes out for me personally, this is not explicit in the book, but for me personally, it speaks to ancestor support. Support from ancestors, support from guides. It's also a very strong grandmother, mother energy. This is why you're percolating because fire signs, it seems like this is also coincide. It's all coinciding at the same time. It's all happening simultaneously, right? The clarity, the download, the inspiration, um, the enlightenment is also coinciding with dealing with some very, um... oh, so many things just came in. I was going to say deep shame, actually. And then I wanted to say deep ancestral patterns. I feel like there's been a lot of resistance to that. I feel like there's been a turning of a blind eye to that. Almost like, I'm just going to call a spade a spade fire signs. Um, almost like, well, that can't affect me. Just, and I get it. I get it. Sometimes if we like will it into existence or put a spell on it, like I, I get it. Sometimes that works. But if something's true, something's true. And I feel like there's been a lot of energy put forward to that doesn't apply to me. That is not me. That is not in me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That felt a lot on that one. My solar did not like like that. That is not in me. Hmm. Again, I still feel like tied to like patterns, patterns, patterns. I feel like you've been rebuking part of your shadow. Fire signs. And you're becoming aware of that. And as you become aware of that, you can deal with it. And it lets the light, it lets more light in, right? The light that breaks through the cracks of things that haven't been broken through before. 
and it sends you into percolating mode. And you want to share. You want to. You want to share. You want to act on this. But again, it's not. It's not the day. Today's not the day. Overall, we have Otter. You guys know I love the Otter. If you've been with me for a while, the Otter is like my favorite one in this deck. This is warm, fuzzy relationship energy. It's like two of cups, six of cups of lovers. It can also speak to family. It's not just like romantic relationship. Relationship is an all-encompassing word for literally connection between humans, right? Um, but it is a very authentic, very soft, very gentle, very open, and very giving energy. Speaking to devotion even to people. Fire signs, your heart is going through a lot here. <laughs> it's like, I feel like now we're getting into your whole system. It's like we have the third eye, we had the throat coming up as a, in a channeled way anyway. The sacral, now I'm feeling your heart. Are we going to get your soul or two? <laughs> um, something in you has softened you're, because you're not rebuking this anymore. You're not turning a blind eye to this part of you anymore. So you're softening. You're softening. And then we have horse underneath that. Horse, I love horse. Horse is the master of earth in this deck. She is the multitasker. She is the queen of cups, the queen of pentacles, and the high priestess, like all wrapped up into one. It doesn't have to be a she. It's just a very feminine energy. And it also is about freedom and independence and stamina and grace and beauty, making everything look easy pretty much. But this is somebody who has mastered the art of living in flow while also maintaining their emotional spiritual side and then all of their like responsible material world stuff right it's a very strong mother energy fire signs i think are working on some mom stuff relationship to the feminine your own feminine and mother energy is really just it's that nourishment right it's nourishment it's being held and this is very collective right now again also part of what i want to speak on and i just haven't had the time yet to make a video it's coming though it's coming. Some of you are making peace with your childhood. How you've been abrasive and not soft in certain moments with certain people. It's a lot. It's a lot that you're percolating on fire signs. So keep percolating because it seems to be working for you. All right. Let's get into tarot. Five of Wands was trying to come out. And it's funny because then I wanted to say, not yet, not not today. <laughs> like today's not the day. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I think that Five of Wands card is coming out. We'll see. Okay. Twilight Unicorn is Sea Serpent. Ooh. Emperor. Strong card to come out first. Emperor is our sense of authority. It's our sense of authority. It's how we are assertive. It is Aries. It is Mars. Sometimes it's even Taurus for me too as a reader. Um, but it is how we utilize our authority or not. You're percolating in your emperor. In your emperor is how I want to say that. Landing on the unicorn and the sea serpent. Some of you are contemplating how you have misused your authority and you maybe even misused your voice. Your sense of assertion, again, this whole like in times where you've been rough and not soft, right? And even how we sit in our authority sometimes forces us to reflect on how people use their authority on us. And emperor is also very parental. Oh, well, some of you are realizing you're like your dad. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Some of you are realizing that you were like your father or grandfather, maybe grandfather, father, grandfather, patriarchal energy within the family, and you have rebuked that, but now you know it's true. That was a big message for somebody. King of Wands at the bottom, also another father card. Doesn't matter your gender. Some of you may realize that um, this fits someone you know. Tell me more about around this emperor energy with unicorn and sea serpent. I'm hearing, I'm hearing the word conquest. I know where that's taken me in this reading for you, fire signs. But I don't even need to go there because for those, like that word, conquest, conquest, 
that word is enough for you to know it's it's for you and your confirmation. Yep, there you are. Softening. Emperor with temperance. Softening. It feels a little bit like a coming to Jesus moment. I gotta be honest with you. It's a coming to terms with self in ways that you have been avoiding or actively denying. So you're percolating in this. You're percolating in this. Tell me about turtle and frog. For fire signs. That dad message. I like that's still like reverberating through my energy. That dad message. It felt like a big one for people. Tell me about turtle and frog. Oh. Yeah, lots of cards here. Mm -hmm. What you have been denying, suppressing, pu pushing away, not looking at, strength with hermit and the three of swords. Almost what you've been like trying to protect yourself from, but it's about you. It's you, it's you, it's your own feelings. It's your own feelings, it's your own programming for some of you, but you have been actively like not going there. You've been actively pushing it away with the strength card, but Hermit and the Three of Swords, there's no denying it now. And you're going there now. You're being faced with it now. We also have the Eight of Pentacles. So like I said, percolating, percolating, percolating. Um, as you work through this and you soften and you're harmonizing in that way, it's giving you clarity about other things, other things you want to do, other things that you have passion for. Oh, making you realize things you've had passion for that you have also been closed off to because you've also been closed off to this, right? That's like a domino effect. When we're closed off to certain truths about ourselves or certain feelings about ourselves, we close ourselves we close ourselves off to skills that actually might be hidden behind that or tools that might be hidden behind that or even old wants that this forces us to not look at or not connect to. So some of you guys are realizing... <laughs> Your true calling. Wow. Yeah. Your true calling away from the conquest. All right. What else wants to come up for my fire signs? And that lion energy is like really off to the side by itself. I know you guys can't see the de the, the table. Um, but yeah, this lion is just like way on the side, like just like it's you but it's interesting how it's not even in the mix of all that other energies i've already been talking about two of cups at the bottom tell me about lion leo uh, leo well Lion is Leo. Interesting. So Leo's, this might also be like a very specific message for you. Um, I, I was going to say like, ever since I started the fire reading, I got so hot. <laughs> it's like, like the back of my neck is on fire. Um, we have Lion with the Ten of Wands coming out here. This is a lot for you. Okay. This whole process is a lot for you, but you're doing it. Um, and again, it's also giving you clarity on a lot of things on how you want to invest your energy and move, make moves basically moving forward. But you know there's going to be a time and you know it's going to require a lot of work. And when the day comes, you'll know it. But again, they keep saying the day is not today. Two of cups still peeking out at the bottom. Any final messages for my fire signs? Mm. Mm -hmm. Today is not the day. Eight of Pentacles and the Hangman. This, like, if I had any cards, like, in tarot that I would say could represent percolating, that this would be it. <laughs> or Seven of Pentacles. But the Hangman really cements that percolating energy, right? It's like Hangman makes us, forces us, encourages us, encourages us to stay in a state where we are shifting. Where we're shifting and where we're growing or healing. And you're doing all of that. Anything else my fire signs? There's really great things to look forward to, um, but it seems like this was was very needed, very needed. We have Ten of Wands and the Three of Wands, uh, Seven of Wands energy there. So again, you're very determined 
to progress on, progress forward onto newer horizons um, where you have this new sense of clarity on what your true calling is um, and in these patterns of conquest or where you haven't been soft and where you've been rough. It's like all of that. You are looking forward to the future and you're, you're getting ready for it. But you know there's a very specific day and I think keep wanting me say it, today is not that day. You're percolating right now and that's okay to be there. Ret retrogrades are perfect for that actually. Retrogrades are perfect for that. Overall, we do have the Nine of Pentacles, Six of Wands, mm -hmm. Ace of Swords, yeah. And the truth of the Nine of Wands, the Eight of Swords, Jesus, the Seven of Wands, the Devil. Oh, and look, and the Ace of Cups behind the Devil. Just confirms kind of everything I've been saying. So let's just get into it real quick before we move on. Nine of Pentacles and Six of Wands. That's a very feel-good energy. That is feeling pretty damn good about oneself. It's feeling solid. It's feeling confident. Feeling like, you know, you're just, you're doing right things and people are recognizing you for it. Getting a little bit of praise energy here. Like you might be used to people praising you for certain things. But there's another truth. There's another truth. There's something about this energy that's driven by ego is what I'm getting fire signs. I just got to call a spade a spade. Sorry, I don't know no one likes to hear that. But it's just what I'm getting because the reality is this. This is the reality. The stuff that you've been pushing away. And even like the devil with the ace of cups here too. The stuff that you've been pushing away. The stuff you haven't been wanting to look at about yourself or acknowledging about yourself. But you're doing it. You're doing it, you're softening, you're moving on to really, really beautiful things. And also things that are also very true to you. So that's beautiful. All right. All right, fire signs, we're moving on. All right. Woo. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Mm. Earth or air? We're going to go with air signs. Okay. Let's do, ah, 42, 42. Okay. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You need the last part broken down more. You know your own truth. You don't need me for that. You know your own truth. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I see death, two of swords in the world. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I actually am getting pulled to breath for my air signs, which makes sense because you, you literally you're the element of air, right? And breath. <laughs> Um, and also the element of air sits in the heart or rules the heart, rules this part of the body even. Um, breath. What is this breath? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini. You, you, some of you guys could just be doing breath work. That could just be it, what I'm doing. Right here. You could be really utilizing breath work. <sighs> Feels like you're actually getting rid of something though, um, which breath work does help with. Like there's a breathing easier. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I, it has this feeling of like, like sitting like on a rock or sitting like on a cliff or something and just like watching the sunrise and like feeling calm, feeling peaceful, feeling like a new day is here. That's what I'm feeling with you. Like the hardest part is over. That's kind of what I'm feeling with you. Gemini, what? <laughs> Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Nightingale. So air energy, that is a throat chakra card. Nightingale usually speaks to communication, sometimes music, sometimes a preachy energy, but I keep getting like, it's a lot about your breath. 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 We'll get into more like why Nightingale is here because every time it comes out, I always, always feel communication is key. Um, but I feel like you're very solo in your energy this week. Any other messages from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh. 
if you're making me purple letter signs. We have Nightingale and Scorpion. Okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. So maybe something has happened. Maybe something will happen this week. And you will have a blissful moment of, it's a new day that is behind me now. Because <laughs> Scorpion, Scorpion is a card that comes out when we're holding on to stuff. When we're holding on to stuff, when um, we're feeling resentful, we're feeling angry, uh, and we're just emotionally attached to things that really just take away from our peace. And it's attached to the nightingale. I just keep getting that there's going to be a blissful moment where you breathe all of this out and it's a new day and the scorpion energy is not going to be affecting you. That's what I, that's what I'm getting, honestly, with you. Um... But it, there could, this could have coincided with some sort of conflict or fight because scorpion energy is also very much that. So let's continue. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And that scorpion energy is like potent. Moth. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> moth. When moth comes out, it is a magnetized inevitability of an experience. Like you can't stop an experience from happening. Um, it also comes out when literally it's just like a moth to a flame, right? It's like when people are drawn to you or you're drawn to something, but it has an inevitability to it. <sighs> Air signs. This is interesting because I feel like you're, I can feel it. Like you're very solo in this. Um, but at the same time, there's like, there's, there's aggressive energy, there's indications of communicating, there's indications of like, meeting an event or an event that you can't stop. But I feel like you're just searching for the peace in all of it. You're searching for the peace in all of it. No matter what goes down, because again, I feel like some of you, there's like some sort of conflict and it could even be like a literal fight, um, like where words are exchanged and you can't avoid this fight, you can't avoid this conversation. And you're going to have a moment afterwards where <sighs> it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. I feel like you're just getting rid of your scorpion energy, honestly. Overall, Stingray. Interesting, my, my voice started cracking and look what's on the bottom. We have black egg with a throat chakra. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, air signs, I can't get away from this feeling. I feel like there is some sort of confrontation. There is some sort of moment that's very difficult. <clears throat> that's very difficult to, to navigate or to just get to the other side of, but you will get to the other side of it. So Stingray is my card of emotional strength, spiritual strength. It's kind of my King of Cups card, right? Also speaks to emotional maturity. And then Black Egg, like I said, is throat chakra. And it comes out when there's something that needs to be communicated, but communicated from this place of spiritual strength and emotional maturity, wisdom, the higher mind, the bigger picture. This feel, I can't get away from it. It feels like a confrontation. But I think you're going to handle it just fine. It might be very hard, but I think you're going to handle it fine. Let's go ahead and pull out some tarot cards. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So I got Nightingale and Scorpion. Something has to be acknowledged. That's what I'm getting. The Scorpion has to be acknowledged in order to actually breathe it out, release it. It needs to be acknowledged. Tell me about, okay, let's just focus on Nightingale. Just talking about Nightingale for air signs. What? Mm. Seven of Cups. 
Seven of Cups can be overwhelm. It can be options. It can be fantasy. It can be very like daydreamy energy. I, I feel I actually just feel like confusion. Um, like something became chaotic. Something is chaotic. Something is chaotic and something is like hard to make sense of. This is why it's important to I think this is why it's important to talk about whatever the scorpion energy is. Talk about the seven of cups. Why is the seven of cups here? It's like, like there's some, like literally like, let's like move the smoke out of the way and see what's really going on. Some of you could feel like someone is like, how do I want to say this? I'm, I'm getting the word smoke screen. I'm getting the word smoke screen. You could feel like someone's making something like unnecessarily confusing or someone's being elusive. It's like, there's, there's just, there's very clearly like things are not quite what they seem. And that you want you want everything to be seen. Tell me about Nightingale and Seven of Cups. Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is the legacy card. Ten of Pentacles is wealth, it's health, it's family, um, it's household, right? It's stuff that you're putting a lot of energy and time into, something that's supposed to like hold you up for years to come. That is the Ten of Pentacles. And right now there seems to be confusion around legacy this is the card of legacy in terms of all of that something is not clear and you want it to be clear i keep feeling like there's a part there's like it's not just you but i feel like your energy is very solo but i feel like this is tied to another person or people i can't get away from that feeling let's look into scorpion whoa well that was fast <laughs> that was very quick we have scorpion and the wheel of fortune so again, Scorpion is stuff you've been holding on to. It's not new. It's not new. It's stuff that's been there. And I want to say stuff that like the air hasn't been cleared about. The air hasn't been cleared about, but the air is about to get. I got disconnected. But the air is about to get clear with the Wheel of Fortune being there. That's what it is. You're just trying to clear the air. Tell me more about Scorpion. With Wheel of Fortune. Can I get another card for Scorpion and Wheel of Fortune? interesting <laughs> not the cards i'd expect for the scorpion card page of wands page of wands is communication it's also delivery of news it's also inner child and passion and, and all of that i keep feeling like communication is key it's time to clear the air it's time to clear the air it's time to make sense of things because with the ten of pentacles being here whatever has been affected for you or is being affected by like things not being clear it's literally how you are supported and held up in your life that's a big deal that's a really really big deal i i can't get away from this feeling of confrontation anyway inevitable event of clearing the air let's look at it tell me about moth Tell me about moth. Feels like a liberation of your inner child for some of you too going on there. Tell me about moth. Yeah, because you've been kind of stuck in this with moth and hanged man being here. You're, you're, this is shaking loose for you and it's inevitable. You're not going to stop it. It actually needs to happen. I think you honestly want it to happen. But the hanged man... Yeah, it just feels like you've been in this energy for a while. Some of you could have been feeling lost on your path, like lost in terms of like, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right job for me? Is this the right relationship for me? Should I move? Like some of you have been feeling very, very unclear about even your own standing in your life. And hence feeling kind of stuck. So it's time to shake it loose. It's time to shake loose the scorpion. The scorpion is what's causing part of the confusion here. For some of you, the scorpion is just like trauma or programming, and it's making things unclear. For some of you, the scorpion is something that happened between you and another person, and then it's time to talk to them and clear the air. No matter what, it's time to get, uh, you know, it's time to get shaken up, unstuck. I might just say unshaken, but no, it's unstuck.
Yeah. Hangman with the three of wands. You deserve this, air signs. You deserve this. That three of wands just feels like, can I finally just step forward is what that feels like. Can I, can I finally just step forward? Can I finally just not feel the weight of that seven of cups? Can I feel the peace of a new day? They're bringing me back to that. Can I feel the peace of a new day, of a new horizon? You can. You absolutely can. Oh, that's it. On the bottom, ooh, King of Wands, Leo Energy. Mm, Eight of Pentacles. Ooh, wow, Four of Cups. Four of Pentacles and another four. Excuse me, air signs, you have four, four, four. Probability of that happening is pretty low. Just saying. So synchronistic, especially even seeing fours here. Yeah, I like, you wanna be, you just wanna be free. You wanna be free of confusion. You wanna be free of feeling stuck. You wanna be free of feeling held back. You wanna be free of the scorpion. You wanna be free of the scorpion. And King of Wands with the Eight of Pentacles, you are willing to put in the work to do this. You want to put the energy into this. But I keep feeling what's feeling like what's going to clear the air is some some. Ugh, I can't talk. What's going to clear the air is some form of communication. It could be literally clearing the air with someone you've had a fight with or had some sort of debacle with. It could be talking to a friend and just like just getting all of this out. It could be talking to a counselor. It's like communication seems to be very key here. Underneath the King of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles, you do have the Four of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is also where you're, you're wanting to head because you're at the Hangman and the Three. The Three moves to the Four. Oh, I'm getting nasally. The Four of Cups and Four of Pentacles, it feels elusive to you. It feels elusive to you because there are things that need to be cleared up. It's just very clear. There are things that you need to clear the air on for yourself. And talking is going to be part of that. Okay. All right. All right, air signs. That is it. Let's go ahead and move into earth. Good luck, my air signs. Okay. Earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. What's going on with my Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo? Talk about elusive. Earth signs, you feel very elusive. <sighs> Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Talismans? Talismans? Um, some of you may benefit from investing in a talisman. Some of you may have actually received or created a new talisman but they, they're bringing up the word talisman for my earth signs capricorn taurus virgo capricorn taurus virgo i feel like you guys are really quiet what is going on for my earth signs i always say there's a reason whatever whatever, whatever element goes last there's a reason for it so i might be going through some big stuff here earth signs capricorn taurus virgo Yeah, you're elusive right now, Earth signs. Whale. Whale is, whale is the subconscious. It's a very Piscean energy. It also speaks to the great mystery, also speaks to ancestors, also speaks to the creator, but it is literally about the depths of your soul and the depths of your psyche, okay? Earth signs, are you hiding? Are you in the underworld? What is going on? <laughs> what is going on, Earth signs? What is going on? Okay. You're basically a Pisces right now, Earth signs. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Oh, oh, you're diving deep. Shark with elk. Did not expect that. Earth signs, you're diving very, very deep into yourself here. Shark 
is a perceived threat. And I say perceived, whether it's real or not. It's this feeling like doom. It's this feeling like something is looming. Something is looming. Something is looming. Something is looming. Can I trust this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I feel like you're going very deep inside of yourself to feel whatever that is that you're sensing. But it's around the elk, which is also very interesting because elk is the divine masculine principle in this deck. He is like the ultimate partner, parent, holds stuff down, very compassionate, but very unyielding at the same time. Uh, knows how to take care of people and help people feel very safe. That is the elk. What is making you question this? I feel like this deep dive you're doing, or sign some of you, it's literally to confront this aspect of yourself. Like if you're actually an elk, elk is also very elder too. Like, do you have the level of integrity that, that an elk does? Do you act with integrity? Do you act out of a very healthy masculine place or not? It's a deep dive in confronting this aspect of self, this aspect of elder, this aspect of masculine, this aspect of integrity. Some of you were forced to go within because there's an ex there was, I want to say was, some of you might be coming up, an external experience with an elk energy and you're not trusting it and you found it very triggering. And it forced you to go within to confront yourself. Okay. What other animals want to come out here for my earth signs? Yes, we're on earth. We're on earth. Mm, I like it. Fox is coming out as a nice support. Fox is very intelligent. It's very Gemini. Fox is actually also a partner card. Both of these are partner cards. Um, but elk, I'm sorry, not elk, sorry, fox. Fox is more about the intelligence. Um, it's actually very king of swords to me, even though this is technically an earth card. But fox is discerning. Fox can move on a whim if it needs to. It's good that fox is here because you need that level of discernment. This is a deep dive in self. I like, it's very clear no matter what pushed you to go within in the first place. And some of you, this hasn't happened yet. That the push to go within hasn't happened yet. It really feels like it's gonna come as a result of a trigger. Of a trigger or a result of an opportunity to really step into that and really come from that place. And it's a moment of like, oh dang, can I actually do that? Like, oh dang, am I, like, am I actually ready for that? <laughs> I think that came up in Capricorn's reading too that I did. Overall, we have the eagle. The eagle is the world card. New cycles are afoot, which means we need to close out old cycles and clean house, right? And that's what I feel like you're doing here. Just confronting this within. Okay. Let's pull some tarot. Both the same element card there too. Yeah, yeah. Both earth, earth energies. Both earth energies. but whale watch us get like the high high priestess or the hair font or something or hangman playing about the whale oh not quite the same but tower there's the push there's the push to go within tower moment that's what i was feeling i felt like something external happened or will happen and then it's like oh time to go here <laughs> <laughs> time to retreat within let me look at this let me look at this so not surprised this is here um and it's funny because you're the only ones to get the tower card no one else got the tower card and what i've also been saying this week jupiter conjunct uranus that is like serious earthquake energy to our foundations and beliefs the tower and here it is and it's in taurus and this is the taurus read so there it is. Some of you are going to be um, experiencing a major shift in your beliefs, specifically with these two cards being here. Okay. All right. Okay. Tell me more about the tower. Wow. Okay. It's, it's good. It's good. I'm just like, 
it, wow, like I'm really feeling it in my heart space. With the whale, we have the tower, the lovers, and the three of cups. Two very strong majors coming out here for you on the whale card. It's kind of what I was feel what I was saying before, where it's almost like you're asked to be this, to step into this, to own this, or an energy like this shows up in your reality. And you're like, oh, dang. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And it forces you to go within. But the tower is that cat. It's a catalytic moment. That is the external event. It's a catalytic moment of being confronted by this energy, by someone or many, many people or an opportunity saying, hey, are you ready for this? Or someone literally with this energy just like talking to you or meeting you or interacting with you and it's just too much. Boom, it's too much. But the lovers in the three of cups, it's a beautiful thing. This feels like aligning to very joyous celebratory events is what that feels like to me. Aligning to something that you've actually been wanting and waiting for, something that can make you happy. Yeah, aligning to something that can make you happy, something you've been wanting. Interesting. All right, let's look at the Odang. <laughs> let's look at the shark. <laughs> Death. <laughs> wow. You have four tarot cards and three of them are majors. Two of them are Scorpio energies. Death and tower. <laughs> Earth signs, this is big. This is big. Death card indicating major change. And I keep getting it's just a confrontation. Like you're gonna, you're confronting yourself, honestly. Like that's what this is. You're being, you're, you're being asked to confront front yourself. But death is indicative of that change and transformation. Some of you may experience this too as like your programming breaks. Also, that, that yeah, that's in line with your beliefs breaking, shattering. That's in line with consciousness expansion. This is a big read for my earth signs. This is a big deal. Tell me more about shark and death. <laughs> okay, when the Capricorn reading drops, I think it comes out Wednesday, the Cappy read. Anybody who's resonating with this, you might want to watch the Cappy read. I keep hearing, are you ready? And that's what kept coming through in Capricorn reading. Are you ready? 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 <laughs> and the reality of if you are or not, is terrifying to you. Ooh, what? Whoa. Huh. Death and the Ten of Swords. It's making my head hurt. I like literally I just got a huge pain out of my third eye. Shark, death, and the ten of swords. Confronting yourself and putting an end to any fear that you have about this energy about becoming this energy or dealing with this energy outside of yourself. It's it's honestly both. But putting an end to the fear, that's what I feel like that is, putting an end to the fear. Some of you, this is gonna result in some major shadow work, okay? Some of you may feel like an ego death with the death tower and 10 of swords and lovers being out here. Jesus, got the moon on the bottom too. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to elk and fox. I just keep hearing, are you ready? Tell me about elk and fox for my earth signs. <laughs> well, world card. Oh, and the king of wands. That was a surprise. We have king of wands. The world card. So daisily. Excuse me. Knight of cups. Ugh. And the Eight of Pentacles coming in on the Elk and the Fox. Again, I feel like it's screaming the same thing. Are you ready? Are you ready to walk through the portal? Are you ready to walk through the world card? <laughs> like, the world card. Remember, you guys got eagle too. Are you ready or not? It's what you want with the Nine of Cups. It's what you've been wanting. And I felt that too, even over here with the Lovers and the Three of Cups. It's what you've been wanting. It will make you happy. Are you going to rise to the occasion or not? Very clear cut. 
Very, very clear cut. Definitely watch the Cappy read. All right. Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Mm. On the bottom, we have the King of Swords, oh, the Confrontation, Five of Wands, and then Victory, Six of Wands. Interesting what's on the bottom, though, of that. We got the Five of Cups underneath that. For some of you confronting any fears or restrictions or programmings around being ready to be this or being ready to deal with this energy, uh, might also coincide with some like old trauma and just like disappointing circumstances that like grief, grief, like needing to work through grief so you can break down the programming. But this is your overall energy. King of Swords and the Five of Wands and the Six of Wands going through this confrontation and coming out victorious, coming out ready, coming out and being ready. Wow. Okay. Earth signs, you have the most interesting reading of all. Um, but that is all for the evening. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. And thank you to everybody who sent me super chats. So generous. And I forgot who it was, but someone sent me a $50 one. Very, very generous. I really appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you for supporting me and allowing me to do this for you guys as well. And I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you enjoy the retrograde as much as you can i hope you also enjoy the next eclipse especially if anybody gets to actually see it very jelly i won't be although who knows with all this energy who knows <laughs> suddenly i might like be in the part of the country where i'll be able to see it you never know um but i love you guys so much and i'm gonna hop off but don't forget to check out the website socials all the stuff listed below and i'll see you guys very soon okay take care guys namaste